okay? So in case in case you guys haven't been paying attention to the ESPN, my quarterback, my quarterback, Eli Manning, quarterback of the New York Football Giants, who's been sort of an Iron Man over the course of ten plus years. All right, this gentleman hasn't missed a game, hasn't missed a snap in ten plus years. There have been ups, there have been downs. We've got two Super Bowls out of him, multiple playoff appearances. It's pretty good seasons. We've had some pretty shitty ones as well. 2013 comes to mind. We've had some bad years. Mostly good years here with the Giants. See, I'm a Mets fan as well. So the Giants are the only reason I don't slip my own throat when it comes to sports. All right. So I bring this up because this Sunday they're going to bench Eli Manning. He's not hurt. He's not injured. He's not even frazzled by everything that's been going on. Consummate professional, as per huge. But he'll be sitting a healthy scratch this Sunday. And in his place, the proven failure, the jawbreaker, the former New York Jet, which should tell you how low this situation is. They're starting the former New York Jet quarterback, Geno Smith, in his place. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with many football discussions, Geno Smith was indeed the football, the quarterback of the New York football Jets up until he got his jaw broken by a practice squad guy over a bet. That's how much respect he has in a locker room. These motherfuckers just sat there and watched their starting quarterback get yacked right in the fucking mouth. Broken jaw. (laughs) That's how much fucking respect he has. I got pissed when they signed him as a backup because, again, I opened with proven failure when discussing Geno Smith. So he'll be starting this Sunday. Now, this pisses me off as a fan This pisses me off. And I have heard every fucking excuse in the world today. Today. This has been going an ongoing conversation all fucking day today with me. Okay? And benching Eli. Oh, it's the best decision. How in the fuck is ending this man's... Forget forget about the play for a second. Even if Eli couldn't hit the red side of a fucking barn. Okay, even if Eli couldn't hit water if he was standing in the boat in the middle of the lake. This man has earned the right to have his fucking streak intact. Now, let's talk about these fucking excuses that I've been hearing. Well, they didn't actually bench Eli. They gave him the opportunity to start. They were just going to have a quick cord with him and put in somebody else. So he can still get his start in, but then we'll just yank him out and put anybody else in there. Horseshit. No, I'm not horseshit in the sense of it didn't happen. Eli has confirmed this and pretty much said, ah, if you're going to do that, you might as well just start the fucking kid. Why even put me on the field in the beginning of the game in the first place? You might as well just start the fucking guy, right? What a fucking insult. It's insulting. I'm the starting quarterback of this team. I've been the starting quarterback of this team for forever. He's not only been the starting quarterback for this team for forever, he's the greatest quarterback in this franchise. History. History. No other giant QB comes close to Eli Manning. None. And any, any, a real, a real old school Giants fan will tell you this is, this is one of those excuses I hear. The eye test. The eye test. The eye test will tell you that Eli Manning was never really that great a quarterback. So it's not enough to kick a man while he's down because he's having a bad season, but now he was never a good quarterback? That's what they told me. That's what I've been hearing all day. Ah, oh, he's trash anyway. He's trash. He's trash? Have you seen the quarterbacks in the NFL this year? 
Have you seen them? You know how many teams in the NFL right now would kill for an Eli Manning? The Jets would kill for an Eli for for this Eli Manning. The one that we're all looking at right now. It's not enough that he doesn't have anyone to protect him. It's not enough that he doesn't have anyone to throw to. It's not enough that the defense gives up point after point after point. No, but it's all Eli's fault, right? He's only the greatest player in the history of that position in that uniform. And and then there's the other one. This is the other excuse that I heard. Well, they have to plan for the future. Right? They have to plan for the future. What future? They're starting Geno Smith. They're not starting the draft pick. They're not starting the young guy. They're starting Geno Smith. Again, the proven failure. He's a bust. He's been a bust for years. That's why he was so easy to sign as a backup. He was a just-in-case. And just-in-case of what? Injury. Is he injured? No. So why the fuck Why the fuck are we making a change? Here's the other excuse. Well, we're trying to salvage the season. Sal- salvage the season? Sal- salvage what? Salvage the season? They're two and nine. They're two and nine. There's only like five games left, which would put them at seven and nine, which, spoiler alert, isn't the fucking record you want. You need help on this team. So the lower the draft, the, oh, excuse me, the higher the draft pick you get, the more you'll get. You can spend that off and get multiple picks from different rounds. Really give a new foundation to this team. You're not trying to win games. You're trying to lose games. You don't want to salvage the fucking season. That doesn't make any fucking sense. No, we're not salvaging any fucking games. Geno Smith is Geno Smith is the answer over Eli fucking Manning. And, and every time I talk to these fucking people, and it's not just NFL fans, it I hear Giants fans. I hear Giants fans. Well, he had a lot of luck. He had a lot of luck. The man began his career in 2004. Okay? It's 2017. It's a 13-year career with the same football team. And you're going to say he had a lot of luck. Okay, let's talk about that luck for a second. I want you to go ahead and listen to this for a quick second. All right, It's a 13-year career he had with the New York Giants. His entire career has been with the New York Giants. Let's not lose track of the fact that they almost didn't have that. Because remember, Phillip Rivers was supposed to come here. And we ended up getting Eli in that trade. And how many Super Bowls does... Philip Rivers have again? Oh, that's right. None. How many does Eli have? Two. And every time I bring up the Super Bowls, they say, well, that's all you ever bring up. Eli's two Super Bowl wins. I don't think Eli won those Super Bowls. The defense won it for him. Right? That's what happened. The defense won the Super Bowls for him. Okay. I'm not even going to argue that. The undefeated Patriots, yeah, that was a defensive game. The second one, I don't know if that was all all the defense. I seem to remember a, a, a very deep pass to Manningham that saved a lot of a lot of heartache amongst Giants fans. But everybody has blinders on, right? He's lucky. That's what I hear. He's lucky. Okay. Well, let's see. I have a few things in front of me here. Let's see. Let's see how lucky he's been over the course of his 13-year career. Now, he, he's been lucky, right? So he's had all the receivers in the world. He's had all the protection, right? He's, he's, he's had the, the, the number one unit for 13 years, right? Because if that's the case, then maybe that could account for some of the things that I'm seeing here because if you look at touchdowns, and I'm not everything that I'm about to tell you right now is not New York Giant-centric, all right? This is all time. All time. 
Okay? All time. The top, not the top, but of all quarterbacks who've ever played the game, all time, Eli Manning rakes seventh in touchdowns. All time. Seventh. And he's only eight away, eight more touchdowns away from sixth place held by Frank Tarkenton. And, and the, the season's not over yet. This is an experiment. So Eli could still play. So by the end of this season, if he does play, I can see him getting eight more. Right? At least eight. That would put him in sixth. You know who's above Eli? All-time touchdowns? Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Dan Marino. And I, all those names, and then Eli. How about Dan? Was he lucky? Drew Brees, lucky? Tom Brady, lucky? Brett Favre? How about his brother Peyton? Is he lucky? Nah, I don't think those guys were lucky. I think those guys had skill, right? That was how those guys made it. They had skill. What about passing yards? Right? That's got to count for something. Well, how many yards has Eli really passed for? Right? Seventh all time. And he's only 850 yards away from sixth place. Again, if he plays the next few games, 850 yards passing, he can get that. Who who would he be passing? Oh, John Elway. That's who he'd be passing. You know who would be ahead of him in passing yardage all time if he takes over John Elway? Pat and Manning, Brett Favre, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Dan Marino. Were those guys lucky? Allow me to continue. Pass attempts. Pass attempts. How many times has he thrown the football in 13 years? He's had 7,220 pass attempts. 7,220 pass attempts. He's completed 4,319 of them. Now, percentage-wise, that means that for every pass he throws, he completes roughly 60%. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well, that's not a that's not great. That's slightly above the middle there. He's basically uh one for uh one for every two, right? Okay. You can sling it that way. I'll give it to you. But let's head over here to passes that are intercepted. He's 18th all time. Not a great number. But his total is 222. 222. That means for All those passes, 7,220 passes, only 222 of them have been intercepted. That means 6,998 other passes weren't turnovers. Which means even if he doesn't hit the target, he's not turning the ball over. They call that efficiency. 13 years of consistent, efficient football. But he's lucky, right? Okay, I have a stat for you that might prove your theory. He might actually be lucky. After everything I just said, yeah, maybe he is lucky, right? So let's look at this. Fourth fourth quarter comebacks. Fourth quarter comebacks. You know, when the game's on the line, you know, when the superstars set up and just go crazy and pull it out for their team. That's the stat everybody likes to talk about, right? Fourth quarter comebacks. Okay. Well, guess what, folks? He's tied seventh all time. Who's he tied with? Drew Brees, Brett Favre, Ben Roethlisberger, and Fran Tarkenton again. Hell of a hell of a steamed company, no? Well, who's who's better than Eli at fourth quarter comebacks? How about Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Dan Marino, Johnny Unitas, John Elway, and Joe fucking Montana? That's where Eli is, folks. Peyton, Brady, Marino, Unitas, Elway, Montana, Eli. These are stats that are not only proving he's clearly the best New York quarterback of all time. He's in the conversation As some of the greatest of all, amongst the greatest of all time. That's where his company is, folks. He's in the same breath 
as a Peyton, a Brady, a Marino, a Unitas, an Elway, a Montana, a Roethlisberger, a Tarkington. We're talking about the creme de la creme, the best ever, the best to do it ever. That's where he stands. So you can take your eye test, and you can take your gut feeling, and you can take all your, well, he was never really that good in the first place. And you can take your, well, he got lucky a few times. You can take them all. And you can stick them right up your ass. Because if you take all of that, take all those stats with the two Super Bowls. Mind you, he won one of the greatest Super Bowls ever played with the Giants and the Patriots in 2007. The guy's clearly a Hall of Famer. And he's an Iron Man. He did all of those things and never missed a snap. And you're going to bench him this Sunday because dot, dot, dot. Makes no sense. Makes absolutely zero sense. 